Good to see um, all of you here this morning and those who are at home, uh, welcome as well. And uh, uh, we're here together. There are some uh, announcements that are really important because they're very timely. Um, I remember la last week I mentioned everything basically is due the 15th, um, but we now have some new things coming up. I want to make sure that uh, you are uh, aware of that. Daniel, could you get me on the, uh, the, the right, the right uh, things so I don't have to hurt my clicking finger. So again, uh, great, to, great to have you. And, and we'll talk about all these things. Here we go. Should be the next. Okay, I'm going to just, I got it from here, Daniel, because that was the last slide. Here we go. That's the welcome slide. Now, um, Operation Christmas Child, uh, we need to get these boxes to one of the facilities um, that are loading that is close by. Um, and so if you say, are, are sitting there going, oh, I forgot, you can bring it by Wednesday evening. Wednesday evening when we have um, uh, our adult time together, that's when uh, we're gonna make sure everything has rubber bands and everything's marked right and everything. So if you could bring it then, uh, that way we'll be able to get it. But, uh, but thank you for those who've brought it. And uh, we're not having a time in the service where everybody brings it forward. And, and I think pretty much everybody caught on and we're just placing them on the table. You might be there going, I still wanna do a box, but I haven't gotten a box. On the front pew over there are some more boxes, so if you want to get that, and then there's also the envelopes that explain what needs to be in it, as well as the marker for the age and, and gender of the child you're ministering to. So again, Wednesday night is the deadline for that. Um, in the back foyer, the, the parlor I think is what it's called, um, we have a table where the food is going, other than that which had to be refrigerated. So um, if... Um, if uh, you are going to be bringing food for the Thanksgiving food collection, again, we're ministering to two families. The deadline is today, today. So if you're going, you're sitting there and, and you're going, oh, I promise to get, if you could bring that by tonight, because I, I, have, to, I have to go to the school tomorrow to deliver it. Uh, the person that I'm working with there at the school only is at Kings Creek on Mondays. So again, uh, if you've forgotten that, bring that. Uh, uh, I'm normally here at least by 5.30. The ladies meet and the, guy, the, the, the others meet. You can just bring it to the fellowship hall. Also, coats um, uh, for Caldwell. Uh, those are going out this afternoon. And so uh, uh, that deadline has passed if you didn't bring them here this, this morning. And uh, thank you, Faye. And I saw her earlier. Uh, but uh, she's going to be getting those uh, to, the, to the association. Here's the new one. Every year we have been able to minister to some families that are in need. The school identifies, and, and identifies them. They kind of know kind of the, the situation. Uh, and in past years, we have done that through the Sunday school. Uh, but being that uh, the majority of Sunday school classes aren't meeting right now, we're, we have a list on the back table, in, in not the back table, it's in the foyer, there's a table and you'll see a list and it has five children that are there and you can write your name to say, this is what I'll bring. It gives sizes uh, for shoes and clothes and things like that, as well as their wish lists for toys and things like that. So um, all that's in the foyer. So please stop if you haven't already um, and fill that because um, Here's, here's the deadline, and this is so that they can make sure they have enough for all the families. We're taking care of two families, one with two children, one with three children. Um, but uh, it's going to be the 29th, two weeks from now, that we need to have all of this so that we can again bring it to the school and they can make sure it's all ready to go. So again, thank you, Doug, for getting that stuff in, in the back ready for that. So uh, again, it's what we've been doing. It's just we're kind of having to do as, as just about everything else this year a little bit differently as we can reach out to some families in, in need in our community. So um, those are some, some things that are coming up. Want to make sure that you are aware of those. And if you're at home, again, you can call and get more information uh, calling the church. Um, and, uh, and, and so today's service is going to be um, 
uh, a little different. Uh, we have a, a praise band that, uh, that Mike has gotten. Doug, do I need to pull you up here to introduce? I'm doing it right now. So um, uh, it, it started with a conversation that Doug had with Mike and said, Mike, I'd like you to do a song. Well, um, Mike has written some songs and, and things like that. And, and so uh, the return was, well, can, can, can I just do the whole worship service? Um, and so I think three out of the four songs uh, were written by you, but that's, that's not for your glory. That's just God put these songs on your heart and, and writing them. And so, um, and so the service is going to be uh, led by Mike enlisted some youth to help uh, with these songs. Um, and so I'm going to lead us in prayer, and then I'm going to ask them to come and, and lead us in worship. We won't know the words uh, on the new songs, so, um, uh, but the, the word says, sing unto the Lord a new song. We'll learn it together. We'll praise God together. Um, and so let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your plans for today. Thank you that we can minister. Thank you that we can give coats to those in need, that we can bring food for family at Thanksgiving time, that, that we could send a shoebox around the world to, to children uh, that will share the gospel. All of these, God, let it be a bridge so that we can share what you have done for us. And God, with this, this new uh, ministry, with, the, with uh, the angels, with these five children and the two, in the two families, that we can minister to them in a loving way that points them to you. And so God, as we come to worship, it's not about Mike, it's not about any of the individuals up here, it's not about the talent, which you're, it's from you anyway, it's all about you. May you be exalted, we pray in your name. Amen.
Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Lily and Liam. Thank you. And um, one thing that's great because we're, we do this live um, um, Uh, live and then it goes to YouTube, you can watch it again and, and everything. So before we have our um, go into uh, the message today, I do want to take time um, for prayer. Um, just some needs that I am uh, aware of. Um, uh, again, I, I bring her up because we just need to continue praying for her and that's Leslie in her battle with cancer. Also want to bring uh, Beverly, uh, John's wife, Doug Regina's daughter-in-law, uh, just going through a variety of medical tests right now. So just, just keep her in prayer uh, with that. Um, and then this past week with the flooding, uh, just specifically, um, there were five flooding victims in Hiddenite. Um, and so just remembering their families uh, as uh, uh, we go. Other prayer needs um, this morning before we pray. All righty. Um, if you would, as we start our prayers, um, I want to start with these shoe boxes as well as the other ways we've been able to minister locally and around the world and just asking God to direct them to the people that need them um, and then we'll continue in, in prayer. And so would you pray with me? Jesus. God, I thank you. You are uh, enthroned. As, as was sung, surrounding your throne are the angels and, and the elders and the creatures singing holy, holy, holy. And that, that, Father, we can come to you because you have shown us your heart and your great love of sending your son to us. So God, as a church, we want to convey that love in tangible ways um, and in ways that, that, that open the door to share the gospel. And so God, I, I pray for these, um, these shoe boxes, and, and I know there'll be more to come, but, but these that are going, that you would direct them to the specific country, to the specific family, to the specific child. Uh, God, hearing testimony uh, of time and time again how, how you have done that. And so, God, as we have poured our hearts into these shoeboxes, um, God, it is, it is nothing compared to the heart you poured to let them know you. And so we pray to that end. The same thing with the coats that are going to be going throughout our county. God, the same thing to the families uh, that will be ministering to, to the Thanksgiving time with food and, and, and then soon after with, with just helping a family being able to supply um, Christmas presents to their children. And so God, use these things to show what a gracious and loving God you are and that again, that is nothing compared to you who gave your own son so we could be saved. So God, we come. We come with confidence to the one who knows all and can do all. We bring Leslie to you. God, help her in her battle. God, we pray for victory in that battle. For Beverly and just some unknowns and various tests she's going through, uh, God be with her and John. And God, for these, these families that have been impacted with these five flooding victims, we pray. And God, we know beyond our community and, and around this area, there were many more. And God, we, we specifically pray for these. So God, thank you. Thank you that you hear. Thank you that you love. And that you are mighty in power 
and all wisdom to answer these prayers in a way that gives you the most glory. We pray to that end in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We, we, well, it was yesterday. Do we still celebrate birthdays that were yesterday? When it's your 94th birthday? You bet. Clay Hedrick, would you stand up? Thank you. I meant to mention that and just uh, got moved. God bless you. I tell you. I thought we did, but we'll, yeah, you bet. All righty. If you would take your Bible and turn to the book of Exodus. Making sure I'm on in every way. <laughs> Get my spot. Exodus chapter 20. We have been going through the Ten Commandments uh, as part of a series called In the Shadow of the Mountain, where, where God... Uh, revealed himself, uh, wanting his people to be intimate with him. Um, and so um, uh, the lessons that we're learning in, in the shadow of, of the mountain. And so um, just a couple weeks to, to just go over the Ten Commandments, uh, not one by one. Um, uh, we did one through four last week and, and looking at the other ones. But I, I want to give a little bit of... of, of uh, Review again, not everybody was there, and, and if you weren't there, and you could just go on our YouTube channel and, and watch. Um, but, but here's what the Ten Commandments are about, because there's some confusion, and in, in, in wh where do they find their, their meaning in a believer who has been already justified and is already made right with God? And so, so what, is, what are the Ten Commandments about? Well, number one, they are to show our need for God's grace. See, all you have to do is try to live them, and you will realize you can't. Jesus made it even that much harder. Uh, we'll look at some passages later when he says, okay, you said murder, you said don't commit murder, but I say don't be angry. You know, and so you know, we'll look at that in just a little more detail later. But, but again, it all brings us to the point going, if it's up to me living by any list of rules or anything, I will fail. I need God's grace. And so that is why he sent his son who perfectly lived it. And so he died for our sins so that we could have a relationship with him. And so the Ten Commandments are a great place to start when, when you want to kind of convince somebody they need Jesus. Because without Jesus, we stand on our own. We stand as failing as sinners. And so, again, the Ten Commandments to show our need for God's grace. It's to reveal God's character as you, you, you hear the rules, you hear what's important to God, um, and, and, and it displays things about Him. And so, you know, I would say the majority of the message today is going to be saying, here is what we learn about God or God's desire for us or the promises that God has for us um, as we briefly go through these. Um, and, and then we, I'll end the message today by, by going on, how does this explain how we love? Because Paul says, and, and Jesus said, and all, you know, they, they say, listen, all the commandments are found in love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Paul says, if you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the commandments. You don't even have to remember any of these. If you love God with all you are, and love your neighbor as God wants you to. Listen, you don't have to worry about keeping up. You will do that. And again, we'll, we'll look at that um, near the end of the message. Because the commandments, uh, one through four, tell us here's how we love God. That was last week's uh, message. Commandments five through ten uh, tell us here's how we love uh, one another. Now, some go, well, I think number one through four is more important because that's about loving God. But, but look, what, look what God's word says. Dear friends, since God so loved us, and the, the previous verse talks about him sending his son for us. 
since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. If we love one another, God's love's in us and his love's made complete. And then John, in just a few verses later, writes this. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, He's a liar. Well, I do number one, two, three, and four, or at least I try, and I focus on that, and I have relationships. No. And so as we look at number five through ten, listen, as I go through them and I think about them, I go, the Holy Spirit puts it on me where you need to work on some things. Because it goes all the way back to, it's not just loving people, but the way we love God is through loving one another. And so anyone who says, I love God, yet hates his brother is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must love his brother. And so we go through the commands. And just looking, okay, what can we learn about God? What can we learn about how does this explain better love one another by this specific commandment? So first of all, what what it tells us about God. Here we go. Number five, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord God is giving you. What we learn about God is God values the family relationships. God values. God instituted the home. In fact, this is, there are two of the six deal with the home and how it is. So one third of the commandments that deal with man-to-man relationships have to do with the home because look, look look it's from the home that then we learn to live outside the home because as we honor father and mother that's the first authority in a child's life well what happens when that child moves out a lot out of the home then then he's got a boss or then he's got some other people that are answerable to teachers and things like that listen you learn the authority at home Ultimately pointing to the authority in heaven. Because listen, when we start rebelling against the home and the father and the mother, we learn how to dishonor and disrespect and disobey our father who is in heaven. And so again, this goes to all, all, it points to all these other relationships. And so... God pictures himself as our parent. Most of the time, it's father, our father, who art in heaven and all this. But but there are times that he says, as as a mother, if could a mother leave her child? No, neither will I leave you. And so he uses the picture of a parent of this is how I deal with you as a loving parent. Sometimes as a disciplinary parent. Sometimes as one that you can just come and, and hang to and say daddy to. This is how he has pictured himself. And so as we learn to be in right relationship in our human levels, we learn to be in right relationship with our Father who is in heaven. Commandment number six. You shall not murder. Okay? Whew. Good. That's not, that's all right. I'm not that. I haven't done that one. I'm good. I'm good. We'll read what Jesus said about that in a little bit. (laughs) But what does this tell us about God? God places the how, the highest value on human life. You shall not murder. And it's not talking about anything 
but humanity. It's not talking about the animals. It's not talking about trees. It's not talking about all this other stuff. It is talking about humanity. Whether those who are old, God values your life. Whether you are a child, God values your life. Whether you've yet to be born, God values your life. You shall not murder. It says this, why? Why, why is human? Why, you know, you know what about the, the whales and the, you know, listen, I'm not saying, you know, everything's fair game, but, but I'm just saying God has said there is something unique about mankind. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. Basically, he's saying capital punishment. For in the image of God, God has made man. This is why it's so important. Because of all creation, it is God's image is imprinted on man. And he's saying that raises the value so much higher. And an attack against man is an attack against me. Here's the promise of God. (laughs) I will always value you. Believer or unbeliever, God values you. How much does he value you? How much was he willing to pay for you? Whether you accept Jesus or not, he gave his own son. His son's blood was the price he paid for you. That shows you how valuable. He didn't die for anything else, but he died for humanity so that we could be with him forever and ever and ever. But then he turns around with this commandment, and I will bless those who value life. Now, later on when we're talking about how, this, how do we show love, and, and, and we get to that part of the message, you know, we're, we're going to see that it's not just murder. <laughs> it's any attack, any attitude that is against another. And so we're going to, we'll look at that in just a little bit. And, and so, so when Jesus says things like this, and this is showing a value in somebody's life, in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the merciful who treat another human being with not what they deserve, but mercy, because then God will in turn show you mercy. Blessed are the, the peacemakers that, that, that instead of getting and escalating hatred and things like that, because they're going to be called the sons of God. You're more in the image of the Father. You shall not murder. Commandment number seven. You shall not commit adultery. Going back to this showing God's God's purpose in the family and God holds the marriage covenant to be sacred. What does that word sacred mean or holy mean and all that? It is to be unique. It is to be only one with another, only one man with one woman for life. How far we've come. Why does he hold it to be sacred? Because he established it. He saw Adam and said, I will make a helper and from his rib formed and fashioned woman and brought them so they could be together for the rest of their life, which for them was like 900 years. (laughs) He is involved in it. At a wedding, you hear these words, but it's just just quoting scripture. Therefore, what God has joined together. Let no man, and we'll do king, put us under, you know, or separate. Um, who joined together? Well, I thought it was the guy and, and, and the woman, and, and they said these vows to each other and all that, and so that made them getting together. Or maybe the pastor kind of waved his hand or, you know, did something weird or whatever, and that put them together. No, God 
is the one who put them together. He holds the marriage covenant to be sacred because he's, he established it, he's involved with it, and he is pictured in it. He pictures himself as that heavenly parent, our Father in heaven, and he's also pictured his son and the church, his bride. And so when we do whatever we want to do with marriage and, and it doesn't last or whatever, how we define it, listen, it messes up the picture. And Jesus is going to be faithful no matter what. And here's the, I won't say the promise of God, but here's the desire. This is the desire. And listen, I, I know there's people in, in the room and, and they've gone through divorce. I think you would probably say, yeah, I wish it was that. But by God putting his, this is how it should be, not maybe how it was, but this is what God desired for you. You can have a unique relationship with your spouse of trust, of intimacy, of enjoyment. See, God is not, thou shalt not. No, God's going, this is what I want for you. Now, I know some are called to be single and all, and, and so, but I'm just saying this is what, but what adultery does is it breaks the trust. It, it ruins the intimacy and steals the enjoyment. Commandment number eight. You shall not steal. Here's what we learn about God. Everything's God's. He owns it all. I mean, quote a bunch of verses, but just everything's God. Everything's God's. Not everything's God. Okay. Um, we possess nothing then, right? If it's all God's, okay. So, you know, keys to whatever. It's His. Car, house, dog. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, we really possess nothing. But what God has done is he owns it all. He gives a stewardship saying, I trust you with. And so if you look at all your possessions as not even yours, but God's, it's like, God, you have entrusted. What can I do with this? Or guess what? You're going to be stealing from God. And you claim it as your own. But, but here's the great thing. <laughs> if somebody steals your truck, they didn't steal your truck. They stole God's truck. <laughs> I wouldn't want to steal, you know, I wouldn't want to steal God's truck and some of that. But, but God is saying, listen, I have put some things in place. I have put laws in place. I have put government in place. I have put things in place to protect in this. But realize at the end of the day, you know, it, it, it's, it's mine. And, 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 and he set some laws up. Here's a couple laws. He set up the law of labor. What was the law of labor? And this was working relationships. You know, boss, employee, things like that. Where one receives goods for good labor. Okay? You go in, you work, the person you work for pays you. Okay, that's, that's a normal working relationship. But, but listen, listen, what happens if you go in there and, and you don't work all that you're supposed to work and you slack off and you do it? What are you doing? You're stealing. But here's another law of labor. It's called the, or, or another law. It's called the law of love in, in regards to this. And that's giving. See, one receives goods not because people deserve it, but out of the goodness of God in our lives, grace to one another. And that's how God wants us to relate with one another. And we'll, in those two different things, depending on the situation, but here's the thing, stealing breaks both laws. Commandment number nine. You shall not give false testimony Against your neighbor. What does this tell us about God? God is truth. 
You can go and find passages that just say God the Father. He's the God of truth. You can see what Jesus said. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You can read a little bit further on. He says, I'm going to give you my spirit, the spirit of truth. God is truth. And here's the, 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 the takeaway from that is you can trust him. If he says it, he will do it. God cannot lie. You can take him at his word. We'll go into some of the applications in just a moment. Commandment number 10. You should not covet. And he goes through a list. Your neighbor's house. You should not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant or his ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now, we can make a long list of their iPhone, their car, their whatever. You know, so, so here's commandment number 10. What does this tell us about God? Well, leading, covet, coveting leads to breaking all the laws. If you covet and desire, well, hasn't that led to murder? You could have a family who's all loving around their mom and dad, and mom and dad die, and because they gave a great big inheritance, you find out how coveting can destroy a family. Coveting leads to stealing. Coveting leads to adultery. And so what this tells us about God is that, that well, here, here's the passage. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. God knows our heart. He says, here's some commandments, and outwardly you, outwardly you could say, well, I haven't murdered, and I haven't committed adultery, and I haven't stolen, and all this other stuff. And then he brings this last commandment to say, listen, where your heart is, that's where it all begins. See, God knows our heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Your life comes from where your heart is. Jesus put it this way. The things that come out of the mouth come from the heart, and these make a, man, a person unclean. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander, and on and on and on. It begins in the heart. And God writing this last commandment is saying, listen, I know your heart it is fallen and we need to guard our hearts so how do these commandments instruct us apply to how we love one another because again what Paul wrote in Galatians the entire law is summed up in this <laughs> love your neighbor as yourself so, so how, how, does, how does each of these show what love? And some I'll be real brief with and some I'll expand a little bit. Love does not dishonor parents. And let me expand that. Remember I was talking about how God values this family unit because from this family unit come all the other things in society, whether we're talking about bosses or, or other leaders in your life. And, and, and so it kind of applies to each of that because, listen, love honors. Love does not dishonor. Love honors I put heavy weight on you. You are important. That's what the word honor means. Love does not devalue life. Matthew 6, Jesus says this. This is, you have heard it said to the people long ago, and here's the commandment, do not murder Anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. 
And, and, and everybody goes, well, that's not me. I didn't kill anybody. You know, well, then Jesus kept talking. And he starts listing things. I tell you that anyone who's angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Anger. That is when your feelings are detesting someone. It might be for the moment. It might be for a long time. But let me, let me ask us to be honest. Have you ever been angry with somebody? We're guilty. We're subject to judgment. And again, this is why Jesus says, this is why you need grace. Because it, what we deserve is judgment. But we cannot let anger stay. Now there's momentary, ah, uh, you know, and then, you know, but God give me the grace to not respond with anger. He goes on. Contempt, which is devalue, devouring a life, saying, you're not worth as much. You're poor. You're young. You're old. You're whatever. A sinner, which we all are. Anyone who says to his brother Raka, which is just a, 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 a you know, calling somebody a, a bad name, is answerable to the Sanhedrin, the, the current court. Slander, defaming a life. Anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell because listen <laughs> love does not devalue life love values and the way we respond to one another that's how we show the value that's how we show love continuing on love does not cheapen the marriage relationship instead <laughs> it it um holds this relationship above all others. Listen, we talk to our teenagers and, and others that might not be married, may get married and all that. Listen, God has special things reserved just for marriage. And he wants that because you're one day going to meet, young lady, a man. And you will want... To, to convey, you are so important to me. And to be able to say these words, I saved myself for you. And vice versa with a, with a man to a woman. You were worth waiting for. Because anything outside of the, the intimate relationship between a husband and a wife cheapens it. Love holds this relationship above all others. Love does not take what isn't yours. Instead, love graciously gives Love does not tell lies. Anybody here tell a lie this week? <laughs> here it is, because it's talking, actually, you know, uh, speaking lies about somebody. How do we do that? Slander. Specifically, intentionally lying to harm another person's reputation. <laughs> Let me be political here. <laughs> and, but at the same time, nonpartisan. Remember all those commercials? Slander. 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 Gossip. Repeating some report without carefully investigating the facts are concern of the person's reputation. But it's true. Yeah, but what are you doing to a person? And 
here's one we're all guilty of. Silence. When lies are said and we do not correct it. Love does not tell lies, but instead it rejoices in the truth. It receives the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. It, you live the truth that whomever lives by the truth comes into the light and you share the truth. And lastly, love does not desire what isn't yours. Can that be hard sometimes? Especially when they flaunt it in front of you. <laughs> Love learns contentment from God. God, what I have is what you've given and trusted. Thank you. Help me to be content with this. And love, going into the Thanksgiving season, love is thankful for what it has instead of looking what it doesn't have. So, looking at all this, <laughs> again, it lets me know, thank you, God, I need grace. But at the same time, it makes me go, God, this lets me know how you want me to be towards others. So God, help me in those failures. Help me to, to be faithful. Help me to not steal, to not think all these things that we've looked at. And so I'm going to ask you to just close your eyes and bow before the Lord. And this is not a time to say, God, I commit to do this better. Because listen, we cannot do apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. And you don't have the Holy Spirit unless you have Jesus. Maybe, maybe this is the time that you're realizing. Because listen, I have heard Christian after Christian say, well, I just live by the Ten Commandments. No, you don't. <laughs> None of us do. We're all failing in that. Maybe this is the time to cry out for God's grace to say, God, if this is the standard, I, I don't meet it. I'm a sinner. And that's why you sent Jesus. So I put my faith not in me trying to do better, but all of what Jesus has already done. He died for my sin. He rose again. But believers, you who have already trusted him, you have to realize you were justified, you still are. That he still loves you even when you fail. It's his hand holding you. But he puts in us a desire. Oh God, I do want to. Have a marriage that honors you. Oh God, I do want to honor my parents and, and then the authorities that come from after that and going down the list. So believers, maybe this is like, Holy Spirit, help me. First of all, show me what you want to work in me. so that I can fulfill by your power the simple command, love my neighbor as myself. And so Jesus, we pray. And, and again, I thank you. You, you made it simple. <laughs> love God, love others. But when we look at the details of what loving others looks like, we have to cry out, help. Help me honor you by you loving through me. 
So Jesus, I pray that our dependence on you would grow that much more. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen.